decided today to keep the policy repo rate under the liquidity adjustment facility unchanged at 8%. We've also decided to increase the liquidity provided under the 7-day and 14-day term repos from 0.5% of net demand and time liabilities of the banking system to 0.75% and decrease the liquidity provided under the overnight repos from 0.5% of bankwise NDTL to 0.25% with immediate effect. So one will compensate for the other. Let me turn to the rationale for this policy. Real GDP growth is expected to pick up from a little below 5% in 2013-14 to a range of 5 to 6% in 2014-15, though with downside risk to the central estimate of 5.5%. Easing of domestic supply bottlenecks and progress on the implementation of stalled projects already cleared should contribute to growth, as will stronger anticipated export growth as the world economy picks up. For the year as a whole, the current account deficit is expected to be about 2% of GDP. Sustained inflows augmented by repayments by public sector oil marketing companies of their foreign currency obligations to the Reserve Bank in March have led to an increase in reserves. Looking ahead, vegetable prices have entered their seasonal trough and further softening is unlikely. There are also risks to our central forecast of 8% CPI inflation by January 2015. These include a less than normal monsoon due to possible El Nino effects, uncertainty on the setting of minimum support prices for agricultural commodities, and the setting of other administered prices, especially of fuel, fertilizer, and electricity. The outlook for fiscal policy and geopolitical developments and the impact on international commodity prices. In addition to these risks, which are two-sided, there will also be downward statistical pull on CPI inflation later this year due to base effects from high inflation during June to November 2013. It is critical for us to look through any transient effects, including these base effects, which could temporarily soften or harden headline inflation during 2014. Our policy stance is firmly focused on keeping the, the economy on a disinflationary guide path that is intended to hit 8% CPI inflation by January 2015 and 6% by January 2016. At the current juncture, it is appropriate to hold the policy rate while allowing the rate increases undertaken during September 2013 through January 2014 to work their way through the economy. Furthermore, if inflation continues along the intended glide path, further policy tightening in the near term is not anticipated at this juncture. In pursuance of the Dr. Urjit Patel Committee recommendation to de-emphasize overnight guaranteed access windows for liquidity management and to progressively conduct liquidity management through term repos, we've decided to further reduce access to overnight repos under the LAF while compensating fully with a commensurate expansion of the market's access to term repos from the Reserve Bank. The primary objective is to improve the transmission of policy impulses across the interest rate spectrum. Let me now turn to developmental and regulatory policies. We have set out a five-pillar framework to guide the developmental and regulatory policies of the Reserve Bank. I invite you all to go through Part B of the policy statement, which lays out the developmental and regulatory measures, the progress made, and some new initiatives that are being undertaken. Let me highlight a few. Some recommendations of the Dr. Urjit Patel Re Committee report have been implemented, including the adoption of the new CPI combined as a key measure of inflation, explicit recognition of the glide path for disinflation, a transition to a bimonthly monetary policy cycle of which this is the first, progressive reduction in access to overnight liquidity under the LAF at the fixed repo rate, and a corresponding increase in access to liquidity through term repos, and the introduction of longer term term repos, as well as going forward term reverse repos. Following on the recommendations of the High-Level Advisory Committee chaired by Dr. Bimal Jalan, and after consulting the Election Commission, 
the RBI will announce in principle approval for new bank licenses. Immediately after, and using the learning from the licensing exercise, as well as building on its previously released discussion paper on banking structure, the Reserve Bank will work to give more licenses more regularly, that is, virtually on tap. It will also set out categories of differentiated bank licenses that will allow a wider pool of entrance into banking. Turning to markets, to expand investor demand for inflation index bonds, design changes improving their attractiveness to the general public are being worked out. In order to expand the market for corporate bonds, banks will be allowed to offer partial credit enhancements to them. The feasibility of limited re-repo -re or rehypothecation of repoed government securities is being explored. As regards foreign investors, the Reserve Bank welcomes them and will continue to work to ease entry costs while reducing risks for investors and the volatility of flows. Towards this end, modalities allowing foreign portfolio investors to hedge their currency risks through exchange traded currency futures are being worked out in consultation with SEBI. FPIs will also be allowed to hedge their coupon receipts falling due during the next 12 months. KYC norms are being simplified for foreign portfolio investors. To encourage longer term flows and reduce volatility, FPI investments in GSEX will henceforth be permitted only in dated securities of maturity one year and above, and existing investments in T-bills will be allowed to taper off on maturity slash sale. Any investment limits vacated at the shorter end will, however, be available at longer maturities, so overall FPI limits will not be diminished. Turning to the inclusion and customer protection agenda, we intend to enlarge the banking correspondent base through the inclusion of new entities as well as considering a relaxation of existing distance restrictions. A number of measures to protect consumers are being envisaged. For example, banks should not levy penal charges for non-maintenance of minimum balances in ordinary savings banks' accounts and on inoperative accounts, but instead they should curtail the services accorded to those accounts until the balance is restored. Finally, and last but not least, to tackle distress in the system, the comprehensive framework we outlined to help banks reduce their NPAs, even while putting distress projects back on track, will be effective from today. We will monitor progress and make any needed adjustments to ensure it operates smoothly. I hope that the only thing that was surprising about monetary policy today was a lack of surprise. I'm glad financial markets and analysts have started understanding what we are doing.